The Small Business Show, episode 380 for Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small business-ing every week. Sponsors for this episode include a new sponsor, taylorbrands.com slash SBS, where you can go to get 40% off of this AI-driven all-in-one platform for anyone aspiring to start a business or a side hustle. They, they, they've got everything. And uh, and then also a returning sponsor, HunterDouglas.com slash SBS. We can go see their smart solutions for dressing your windows and take advantage of some generous rebate savings, too. We'll talk more in depth about each of those a little bit later in the episode here. For now, back here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How goes it, man? It goes. I uh, I had a successful working while traveling trip last week, which is which is good. Uh, you know, I had, we had to go pick up our son in Portland, uh, oh, Oregon. Yeah. yeah. And I really, I, I made it an intention because we've got another trip coming up in a couple of weeks. And I, I knew that if I got behind on things at the office, I would be, it would just be a, a disaster. So uh, I, I, you know, I brought that extra screen with me and. Oh yeah. You talked about man, that. That's cool. It makes such a difference having that. And, and then just carved out time every morning to just dig in and and get through my lists and do the things that I needed to do and make sure I was staying on top of things and pushing things forward. And it really, it's, it was great. I got back and it's like, yep. Okay. Good to go. Like nothing, nothing piled up while I was gone, which is great. So yeah, worked out. That's good. That's cool. Yeah. Very good. Glad to hear it. I don't recommend m- making it so that you work on every trip that you take. If it's a vacation, make sure you take a vacation. Is this really work, Dave? Is this is this really work? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's what I ask myself. You know, is it really work? Yeah. Have you ever like carried bags of cement or well, that's you know, the thing. Uh, yeah. Dug a hole or you know built a fence. That's really work. You know, you it's know, funny you s- are, you say that. I've got some. <laughs> yeah. No, I have somebody here. I've got. Well, it's a team of people building a patio for me. And, uh, and they started while we were gone. And so there's been some progress and, and I was talking with him this morning about a couple of things. I was thanking the guy. I'm like, wow, this really is taking shape. It's looking great. I said, I really appreciate all the work you're putting in. He's like, you know, I enjoy this. He's like, sure. It, it's, for him. it's tiring. You, you know, he's like, I, I have yeah. to work hard, but he's like, I don't really think of it as work because I enjoy it. And so yeah. I, it's, it, lucky, it, lucky man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, we, we, you, th- there's that phrase, right? That, uh, you know, f- uh, find something you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life or something like that. I'm sure I'm, I'm yeah, something like that. Yeah. And th- th- that's a different thing for each of us. And so yes, it, it is, it, it is, it's just important. Don't worry about what my thing is or worry. Don't worry about what the thing that the guy, you know, that that's working here at my house, what, you know, that, yeah, he would probably say, Oh gosh, the, the thought of working on my computer all day and and posting content. And That's what he podcasts. used to do. He, I mean, he didn't podcast, but he used to like yeah. work a, a desk job all the time. And yeah, he's like, yeah, go. in the old days, that's what I did. He's like, but this is so much better I'm thinking yeah. for you. And, and I don't like, there's no judgment there. Like, no, no, in fact, absolutely. it's, it, there is judgment. It's positive judgment. I'm glad he yes. found the thing that he enjoys. And yeah, I'm glad here. Yeah. I'm glad I oh, found ahead. the thing too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you, you, you all need to find your own thing. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. I have a guy here. Uh, cutting trees down on our property uh, and it's a young guy and I started talking to him everything turns out he was a financial planner but he just you know he's a certified financial planner but he just couldn't handle being in the office amazing yeah yeah and I was like well this is great you know watching this guy climb trees and do stuff and working outside is awesome especially if you happen to be in California yeah Um, (laughs) working outside is awesome this week here yeah yeah, it's all good yeah that's right so yeah so so it's good but you know, it's uh, we all have different definitions of um, yeah, that kind of stuff, and that, uh, that's it. It's, it's great. Yeah, you find your thing and cool. and just keep cranking. I know it, it's yep. yeah, it's it's a it's a great thing, and it uh, is. Hey, yeah. and I, one of the things I'd like today, I'd love to talk about newsletters. Okay, and uh, we haven't touched on that topic. I was looking on the at businessshow.co. It's been a long, long time, and. Uh, you and I have been talking about content creation and engagement with our listeners and customers. Yeah. And so I thought it'd be good to that. But before 
We do that. I, I'd lo love to update on one of my side hustles. If, oh, yeah. Uh, if we have a few minutes. Uh, we do have yeah, a few minutes. It turns out we do. Yeah, man. That's perfect. How are things going? So, yeah, good. A few years ago, you know, I was looking for another challenge and trying to figure out, you know, uh, so much going on with this social commerce. Right. Okay. And trying to figure out, I didn't even know what it was. Uh, it's like a, we were having people on the show really doing well in this social commerce space, Instagram on Instagram and this and that selling and connecting with people. So I decided to see, okay, let's see if I can start a company just with my phone. I, I remember like, that was your, that, that? like, yeah, oh no, I, I remember it. I'm sure we recorded it too, where you were oh, like, yeah, this is my there. thing. I, you know, I'm going to figure we'll out it. how to do this from my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, I was like, gosh, man, I'm, I, I had recently sold a company. I had some time on my hands and I said, let's, let's, let's do it. So, uh, I, you know, investigated for about a year what to do. It eventually started a, a handbag, uh, resale business. I'm right. a product guy and I like to buy and sell. And I really enjoy finding the Delta between the, the, uh, buying and selling. Yeah. And so just this week, uh, actually last night, um, this one platform I started on and really learned the ropes for this fashion uh, business that I, I still really don't know anything about other than that Delta. Um, went over, we hit a million dollars in revenue on that platform, which is cool. Amazing. Yeah, Congratulations. Good. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, we sell on other platforms as well and have done, you know, we do a ton on eBay, a ton on some other marketplaces that are in, in that fashion uh, space, which has really grown a lot. But I'm really happy to hit that number on Poshmark. And I, uh, the one thing I wanted to share is that now I'll ta I take that. One, one of the reasons that we've been successful or I've been successful on, on Poshmark is connecting with the people that run it. And uh, offering input on what I thought worked well and what I didn't think worked well, especially as they were ramping up and bringing more business sellers on. So you're, so you're talking morning, about connecting with the the people who run Poshmark, not just the people it. who run their own little stores throughout Poshmark, no. but you're well, talking about both. These, right. So yeah. Okay. Two things. But yeah. th this I'm talking about is connecting with their at the administrative people and also uh connecting with their press department, their marketing department yeah. to, to make them know, Hey, look, check this out. I don't know how many, you know, million dollar sellers there are on Poshmark, but I, I you know, maybe there, I don't know how many there are, but I don't think there's a ton. Um, uh, and so keeping them abreast of what's going on, like a couple weeks ago, I reached out and said, Hey, cause I, I know their PR folks sure. They've featured, asked me to talk about their business before. And I was like, Hey, I'm about to hit a million dollars in sales and da 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 da. So, I know there's some features coming up where we'll get some more press and we'll drive more people to our, our uh, Poshmark store. And yeah, you know, so you could turn it into something and connecting on another level, which is what we're going to talk about today as well with our customers. But there's always more to the story. And it's up to you as a small business owner to figure out ways to to grow it and to manage it and uh, you know to, to make the most of it. Yeah. That, well, congratulations. First of all, that's Thanks, man. fantastic. It's been a great yep. time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I'm ready to do something else. Your point, well, yeah, <laughs> that's, how, that's how it is, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it, it, you know, we say we don't have goals, but if we find ourselves hitting a goal that that we had, whether we knew it or not, there is often the after effect of slowing down, like the the drive to get. Yeah, wherever, that's true. Right, the drive to yep. get wherever we've gotten yeah. can back off, and I've I've caught myself at this many times. And it's, you know, you hit a, a comfort level, whatever that might be. And that to me is the most dangerous thing ever for business is getting it is. comfortable. Yeah. I don't want to say complacent because that, no, that no. that's too different. I mean, complacency is also very dangerous, but, but that, that comfort position can really hurt. Uh, and I've, I've seen it happen a couple of times to me and I'm sure it's happened, you know, to, to other folks out there too. So it's, yeah. it's yep. a, it's an interesting thing and it's a really hard thing to recover from, uh, when you hit that comfort level to, to figure out how to turn the drive back on. And you have to find something, uh, you constantly have to find something that motivates you. That's and, it. That's in, right. In, in this business, my whole thing was when we first started that, look, I'm going to start a business, just use my phone. I don't want to spend more than an hour a day. And I wanted to make a net profit of 500 bucks a day. 
Yes. Just just as a side hustle. Okay, about a hundred grand a year, sure. hour a day. And you know, it hasn't quite worked out that way. But uh, the system is definitely working and I don't do it all on my phone because I've automated a lot of it. Right. <laughs> hired some contractors and stuff when I realized like, this is crazy. Um, but uh, it is important to keep challenging yourself, keep refining the system. In my case for this business, it's like, oh, let's find new platforms and let's connect with other sellers. Sure. And let's, I wrote a book about my experience called Poshmark Unlocked. And so I got that motivated me for a while and connecting with people and building a group around the book. So uh, it sounds like a silly little thing, but when you can uh, control the narrative of what it is you're doing, you can build it into something much, much bigger. Yes. Yes. It yeah. That, yeah. So, when you can control that narrative, I, I, you're right. Yeah. You, the, the narrative for yourself is the most important one, I think, to just yeah. keep, keep yeah. driving, you know, forward. That, because otherwise I, it's I not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, interesting. It's cool. Your, your comment about reaching out, letting in, in your case, Poshmark know that here's a thing I'm doing, even though it's literally on their platform, they could know, but there's, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of sellers, yes. right. They yes. can't monitor everyone. They, in theory, they could monitor people that are starting to hit, you know, certain benchmarks and reaching out. And I'm sure they do. But it never hurts to be the one to sing your own praises. One thing yep. I started doing yeah, over a decade ago, I didn't it's it didn't it didn't happen right out of the gate with uh, with my Mac Geek Gab podcast. But I, I started doing it pretty early on and I do it for this show and I do it for um, Gig Gab, which is the show we do for working musicians, is any time we mention anything on the show. Uh, you know, in, just in the in the course of the show, the sponsors, of course, know that they were mentioned. That's fine. Uh, and it's great. But if we mention just someone else's product, like here, we're mentioning Poshmark, I will reach out to them after this episode is published and just let them know, hey, you know, Jesus. we mentioned your thing. And it has gotten, you know, especially, I mean, with all the shows, but it is a, a way of being able to grow your presence. Because generally speaking, if you mention someone and it happens to be a positive mention, well, they might want to tell other people about it. And that doesn't hurt. <laughs> right. You know, at, yeah. at yeah. the very least that happens. And oftentimes they'll say, well, I want to know more about your show. And some of those people wind up becoming sponsors. But it really it's not about that. Certainly not primarily. It, for me, it really is just about letting people know, you know, he, he, the, right now it's difficult to do a, you know, a Google alert for when someone mentions you in an audio format. Right. You can do Google alerts oh, for yeah. when you were mentioned on the web. And certainly we put things in the show notes. In fact, we even put chapters in the show notes at businessshow.co. So you can get those in your podcatchers and jump around. And we always mention that stuff, but it, I figure it doesn't hurt. And I have a, you know, a little engine that I, I use to semi automate sending those out. And it's great. Yeah. 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 And when I started reaching out to like their marketing department, I just told them what I was doing. I said, Hey, I'm That's it. trying this new experiment to see if I can run this thing just on my phone. Here's my this system I'm trying to set up. And, um, and you know, it got their attention a little bit, but then when you started seeing some success and I just kind of kept them posted, then like, Hey, do you want to be, uh, do you want to be in this newspaper article or online? Do you want to yeah. be on this thing? You know, so, uh, keep those connections. And, you know, LinkedIn is the key, one of the keys to the kingdom for me and yep. uh, connecting with all those, those, people and brands and everything. It's just, it's a, it's huge. Yeah. I find, it costs you nothing. I, I, I wish LinkedIn were, were a better social network, but it's, it's, it's not right. They, yeah. they, like people, yeah. people aren't communicating on LinkedIn, but it is a fan. I mean, some people are, but in general, most people are not, but they are keeping yeah. LinkedIn up to date as they move around the industry. So connecting with someone the first time you meet them, when, when there is a, it, just a connection, you know, you've, you've met them via email or whatever, connecting via LinkedIn. And then what later, you know, you might find that they've moved somewhere else and, and now you've got a connection there or they've moved up the ladder wherever they were. And now you've got a connection higher up the ladder. It, yeah. These things can pay off. So yeah, I, I do the same thing. Anytime I have contact with somebody, I always connect them on really LinkedIn good. and I put, I keep a little database. I use it. Well, it's going to come as no surprise. I use FileMaker database because the, I use FileMaker for everything. And, uh, I, I I built a field in there for people's LinkedIn profile. So when I connect to them on LinkedIn, Smart. I put it in there and now I can jump right to them and see, I don't have to bother searching LinkedIn because you only get X number of searches a month or whatever. And, you know, yeah. yep. So, yeah, 
I've used it to find suppliers, to find, I mean, just everything you can possibly think of. Everything. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's really good. And feel free to connect cool. with me and Shannon on LinkedIn, too. It, it, that, yeah. That's, a, that's okay. You know, we, we would love to be connected with you. It's, it's a great Got thing. It. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we're going we're gonna to talk about email newsletters here. The next thing that I want to do, Shannon, if, uh, if it works for you, is talk about our two sponsors. Yeah, let's do it. All right. How many out there are sick and tired of that nine to five or nine to six or nine to seven? If you're anything like Shannon and I were, you are putting your hand up right now. Even if you have a great idea for a business, it can be tough to know how to break out of the rat race. That's why with our sponsor, Taylor Brands, you have a personal guide that takes you through all the important steps of starting your business successfully right from their platform. You can use Taylor to quickly design a logo, create your website, get your business domain, download and edit gorgeous designs for social media, and even order printed business cards and merch, all without having any background knowledge. You can even use Taylor Brands to get an LLC when you're ready to make your business look official. It's this all-in-one tool that you can use today. Man, I wish I knew about Taylor Brands when I started my businesses here. So, we've got you 40% off. Just go to taylorbrands.com and use code SBS. That's taylorbrands.com and code SBS for 40% off. T A I L O R B R A N D S.com. Code SBS gets you 40% off, and our thanks to Taylor Brands for sponsoring this episode. Who doesn't love to live well, to be perfectly at ease, in comfort, and in style? Hunter Douglas, our sponsor here, can help you do just that with their innovative window shade designs, which have gorgeous fabrics, and they have these control systems that are super advanced. They can even be scheduled to automatically adjust to their optimal position throughout the day. You got to go to hunterdouglas.com slash SBS so that you can see the way that you can enjoy the view outside while protecting your privacy inside. You can also see how their shades diffuse harsh sunlight to cast a beautiful glow across your room. And you can also see how their superior insulation that these shades provide keeps you warmer in the winter, cooler in the summer, and helps to lower your utility bills. And then there's Hunter Douglas's PowerView technology, which is what I mentioned before. That's where your shades can be set to automatically reposition for the perfect balance of light, privacy, and insulation morning, noon, and night. So live beautifully with Hunter Douglas, enjoying greater convenience, enhanced style, and increased comfort in your home throughout the day. And right now, for a limited time, you can take advantage of generous rebate savings opportunities on select styles. Visit HunterDouglas.com slash SBS for details. That's HunterDouglas.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Hunter Douglas for sponsoring this episode. All right. Let's talk about email newsletters. It's something That's, you and I have done. Yeah. Well, we've done together and separately. So, uh, but you, I, I, I think of you as one of the masters of the email newsletter. Oh, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, we've had, you know, tens of thousands of subscribers to newsletters and different ways to do it. And I have a, a, di a different thought process on a lot of other people on sure. how to do it. But uh, I think the most important thing is, you know, it, they're massively powerful. And I think uh, I, I read a lot about business and small business and stuff. Sure. Um, it seems like lots of companies are coming full circle back to the power of the email newsletter versus like everybody was really heavy into social right, yeah. for so long. Yeah. And I know that's changed a lot with some of the new things, um, tracking and all that kind of stuff. Well, but, the tracking and um, the, the algorithms that have, yeah. th you know, that, that, prioritize those things which get emotional reactions out of people. and it's terrible. Well, <laughs> yes. I mean, it's great for them, <laughs> I yes. suppose. Yes, great for but, them. But yeah. it's, it yeah. makes the platform less valuable for just getting the word out. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So I, I, I'm happy to see that. I've used newsletters in all my companies over the years, had some, you know, great response. So, you know, first I think we, we should talk about why you need one, Talk about quality uh, over quantity, uh, how to manage it, and, you know, what kind of content to put in it. Uh, I, th I think we can start with why you need one, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think you've, you've probably sold people already, but, but yeah, what, yeah. What are some of the other reasons? Yeah. Well, a couple th – one thing I like versus uh, doing social media stuff is it, it's your – you own the data, right? 
uh, the data you're getting access to on social media platforms belongs to the social media company, right? Yep. Um, so you, you know, having the data, you can track that data more accurately. And I think that we've talked about this concept of a thousand true fans here a, a lot. Yes. Uh, and th this is a way you can build those true fans. And then uh, the obvious thing is you want to sell <laughs> more of your stuff, whether it's products or services, but there's a far greater uh, kind of macro view of this. And I think it all revolves around the relationship that you get to build with uh, existing customers and potential customers. And I think the newsletter is just really the way to go. It, it, it is. And your point about owning the data is key because that relationship is now yours to manage. Yeah. You're not, yep. you know, you're, yes, people can unsubscribe, and you need to let them. But beyond yeah. that, you, you have a direct path to these folks now. And and as long as you're responsible with that and, and respectful with that, you can maintain that direct path to these folks, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is good. And, and, you know, one of the mistakes I've made many times is you know, I'm, I'm always in a hurry. You know, I'm the guy I'm trying to drive fast as I can down the road. Sure. Uh, and I'm always trying to build the biggest list I can. And that, you know, that's really, and I have to tell myself this a lot. You got to change the frame of that. Okay. Um, it's not how many, you know, t you, tons of subscribers that you can build as fast as possible. It's it's really on what connections you can make um, with people, right? And having 50 true fans is more powerful than 500 people that you're hassling. I see what you're saying. Oh yeah. Okay. So instead of just looking to, to just grow the list any way you possibly can better yeah. to better to take the time and reach out and, and actually engage with someone and then have them join the list because now they're going to yeah, want to hear what you have to somebody, say. That's yeah. right. Somebody that joins the list because they want to, and they want something from you. Yeah. Right? Uh, I'm going to mention this a little later, but you know what they, they want some value that you're adding to their life. And that could just, depending on your business, it could be, you know, a coupon. It could be sure. as simple as here's a good deal. Certainly the majority of newsletters are all product or service driven. Um, but I would say those aren't the best. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if, if you've convinced someone that they want to sign up because they want something from you, well then, you have to deliver something of value to them, not just buy, buy, buy yeah. from me, please, please, please. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And and for me, and this is where my views are a little different. Um, I've always made the newsletters personal and I've always had, and we, we would jokingly call it the monologue. And, you know, I would monologue in the intro to, in the newsletter and I would talk about something that's, that was going on that was interesting to me. Um, and that, allowed me because I wanted to have a different kind of connection with my customers. Yeah. Um, and so even though it could be something as simple as um, we're selling parts and we're selling repairs, because I, I realized in my field, which was, you know, parts and repairs and all this kind of stuff, we're really event driven. So where we were, so giving you a discount, like on a screen repair for your MacBook pro does no good. If you don't have a broken break. screen. <laughs> yeah. Today. That's right. And yeah. Today, that's right. So over and over, you know, that, that I was like, how do we connect with these people? And for me, it was, well, here's, we, we have a great team of people that work here. Let's talk about them and let's talk about what's going on in my life and what's going on in share. And you're, you're really open on social, Dave. I'm not as much anymore. Um, but you, you do that. You do the same kind of thing. I, uh, I to a degree, right? I, I'm not as good as I have been. Um, but you know, but I, I go in fits and starts where I will be yes. sharing yeah. things and then, and then I'm not consistent with it, which I realize is part of what you need to do on social to keep people engaged. Very yeah. different with an email newsletter where you, you want to share things when you have something to share. Uh, yeah. it's different, but, but yeah. 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 And some people will hate hated the monologue that I used to do, but we would just create links. Hey, just, you can skip this. If you don't want to sure. hear what's going on <laughs> with me or my family or, you know, my kids. Um, but we had other people that would say, man, I love getting that newsletter every week. Uh, I can get updated on whatever this, that, and the other thing. And I would, I would tell stories in there. Right. Um, and make some great connections. One of the 
most memorable and the largest amount of replies I got was when my one of my kids was really young, and the first sentence in my monologue was, "You know, my kid eats his boogers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and I need your help. How do I get through this?" And, yeah, and just different things and and trying to phrase it. So I, I'm a big fan of personal content. Well, if and you're not you, the type you had. You had two things with that, right? You you had an interesting uh, lead, right? My kid eats his boogers. Yes. But then the follow-up, I think, is probably what got you more responses than just the lead. The follow-up being, and I need help I with need that, help. right? Yeah. <laughs> because everyone wants to help. And, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have had kids, and many of them probably ate their boogers. And so, yeah. you, you, you know, you, you had an audience of people that, a, you had cultivated, they were fans of yours, and now you opened the door and said, hey, if you've got any suggestions, let That's me know. Point. And and now, you, you know, the floodgates open, right? That's, yeah, I'm going to add that to my notes. That's yeah, the, right. Help. Well, yeah. but that's the key, is, is making yeah. it so that people know that they can reach out to you. And, and honestly, that's something we've, I, I'll, I'll say we've stumbled with on this show. We've done it incorrectly yes. at times where... We haven't done a monologue. We've introduced, we've reintroduced that over the last six months where we will start the show with something about that's happened for either one of us. And it's a pretty natural thing. Sometimes we don't even know what, what that monologue is going to be when, when we hit record, but we give ourselves that, that moment in the beginning of the show to share something personal that's relevant to the, the overall structure of what the show is before we get into our, our content. And I, I, it, it has helped. There's more of you reaching out yeah. and you can reach out to us. Like we said, connect with us on LinkedIn, but also simply send us a note, feedback at businessshow.co. We, we'd love to hear from you. It's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we answered you know, some of your questions. What last week it was. We so, did last week. Yeah. yeah Q &A. We're going to do that more based on your requests. We're going to do, you yep. know, Try to do it like an episode each month with with uh, with questions. Yeah, and you know we all get tons of these emails and newsletters from companies and stores and things that we frequent. And you know how often do people just oh delete 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 you know or unsubscribe? So I think you have to give them a reason to want to open the email beyond the stuff that you're selling. Yeah, and it could be like a, a couple things I really like is exclusivity and scarcity really powerful and if you have something in your business that you can apply those concepts to uh some exclusive content uh exclusive product that you only have a few of or a small quantity um something that's only going to be available for a little while those are great things along with you know like i was talking about personalized content but if you're not comfortable with that but maybe if you're not comfortable somebody else in your your company is you never know sure um but but I, what value are you really adding? I said mentioned that earlier, and and if you become a resource, and and I like how you have called that out and flipped it on the head. You know, I, I talk about helping solve problems, but you can also ask for help. You know, yeah. that kind of brings that vulnerability in, which I I love. I think it's really well, yeah. Good. I mean, we we all even even those of us that sit here with microphones and record and release podcasts. We aren't experts in everything. We we might not be experts in anything, but, you know, we are happy to share the things that we have learned. But it certainly doesn't mean that we've learned it all. In fact, quite the opposite. So, yeah, yeah we need help, too. Just, it, it, you know, we're a community here is really what it is. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think an important part aspect with your newsletter, too, um, is you want to automate and and track the data, right? So you need some good tools to do that. When okay. you use a company like MailChimp or Constant Contact, one I really like is is uh, Clavio or Clavio, K-L-A-V-I-O. I think it's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O, if, if oh, memory Okay, serves. you're right. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. We yeah, yeah. In there. But I, I love the tools that they have. And, you know, one thing they all allow you to do is segment your audiences, which is, I think, really important as you fine-tune you know, somebody that just signs up to, to your newsletter, maybe you don't want to dump the booger story on them right away because they're like, what the heck? <laughs> you know, but you, you can you can introduce them and drip, drip some content to them a little bit until they get familiar with you or something. Sure. Um, but I, I love the being able to segment your audiences to potential customers, existing customers, you know, any, any way you can think about it, because then you can 
tell your story in a little bit different manner to each of those audiences. And it's more powerful than just blasting out, you know, the same thing to everybody. Yeah. Did you do a lot of that when you were doing that with Tech Restore? Were you segmenting your audience based on various points of data that you were able to... Not as good as we should have. Sure. We we segmented it based on client type, whether it was... Okay. You know, a a parts customer, a repair customer, an educational customer, because we had, you know, school districts that we would do repairs for all over the country. Sure. So those, you know, we had somebody that wrote that that EDU newsletter. Hey, here's what's going on. Because just to relate it and to be a resource to those folks, um, you know, here's trade shows we're going to be at. Here's this conference or whatever. Got it. And then, you know, the parts guys, they just, what's the, what's going on with availability and uh, pricing and this kind of stuff. So it's, it's a different audience. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And yeah. In, in, in terms of like frequency, how often would yeah, you question. recommend sending to, to people? Like what, what, what did you find work? What did you find didn't work? Perhaps that's even more valuable. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've tried all different kinds, weekly, monthly. I, I think weekly might be too much unless, okay. you, you, you know, uh, unless there's a real reason. I think it depends on your industry, your audience. Sure. Um, sometimes people are have event or date driven businesses. So as, as these events get closer or dates get closer, you have to change the frequency, right? Sure. To remind people. That, that makes kind sense. Of thing. Yep. Right. But I think the once a month is too... Uh, scarce you don't make that great of a connection once a week i think might be a little too much i, I really like the bi-weekly concept uh, okay because then I, I i don't get it and and personally i, I think it works out great yeah no that makes sense yeah okay yeah. right so bi weekly at as a baseline and then potentially more frequently than that if you've got some special truly special thing to send to folks yes. okay that's yeah, right. I'll buy that. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think, you know, I think it works out pretty good. And I would love to, you know, hear, uh, I mean, I, I signed up for some newsletters and you get it like every other day. Oh, it's too much. And it's just too much. Yeah. You know, it's just too much. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to keep things short. I think it's important to have bullet points so people can scan it when they open it and see if there's something in there they want to read further. Right. I think that's in, in really a, a good thing to do to, to show that you value people's time. <laughs> Um, well, and maybe and, and that's, like a, that's the, that's the thing to hold on to. Bullet points are one way of showing you value people's time. Right. But, yes. but th- it's not the only way, but perhaps operating from that mindset of, okay, if I were reading this and I knew that, you know, I, I didn't have all the time in the world to read some, you know, four big mondo graphs of, of, of data that's going to take me five minutes, you know, give, give me the, don't bore us, get to the chorus, right? Like the, the yeah. old Joe Perry Aerosmith thing, right? Like, let, tell me, tell me what's going on and show me how to get to where I want to get to. And, and then that's it. Get out of my way. Yeah. Cause no. maybe they're not going to read every single newsletter you have. Right. Right. Because, but once oh, they're while, not they're going like, to, oh. it's not yeah. a maybe, yes. right? <laughs> like, they're definitely yeah, not it. going to. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I think humor, I've talked about humor on the show uh, often. Yeah. That's a great way to do it. You know, we spent one Macworld, um, you know, was it Macworld, maybe a different show, but we were, you know, scanning people's badges back then and sure. getting all the data that you get. And we still, were, and that people, still happens, oh. the whole badge scan yeah, thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And like, oh, I don't want to get your email. I'm like, oh, no, we're not going to do any, we're not going to send anything to you, da, 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 da. And the first, when I got back, literally the day after the show, I got all their data and I sent out a newsletter and I said, but in the subject, I said, okay, we lied. <laughs> and and I just gave him the one sentence is hey we want to be in touch with you thank you for giving it and and then I said please click this to opt in we'll we will make it worth your while and we got a massive amount of opt ins um, because we were kind of joking around about it and having 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 fun with it that's so, really um, smart yeah huh it's okay I like no I I like that like that's a great way to like the double opt in the secret double opt in right that yes. that's what that is is effectively yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I like it. You know, and yeah. it, it, and a lot of times I wouldn't have any great content to share because it's like, oh, I got to come up with this. But yeah. you can share other people's content, right? Right. They're, just like on social. We do right. it a lot in the small business support group. Um, if you go to businessshow.co slash Facebook, that'll route you right over there. 
And if something's useful, if you read an interesting article related to your field, or maybe not, maybe it's like, hey, it's spring and here's top 10 camping tips or hiking, whatever. Yeah. Feel, you know, share it. You just never know how, you know, someone reading your your newsletter is going to react to that and uh, find some value in it. You don't have to, you know, create something from nothing every single time. It's true. Yeah. There's plenty yeah. of content. I, I'm always on the lookout for things you know, that, that catch my interest. And, and as soon as I notice that it's caught my interest, it's like, okay, well, wait, where else can I, you know, I, I see myself as a many things, but a curator is pretty close to the top of the list. I, you know, we have, we yeah. have this audience, I have audiences at other shows and of course all this content's out there, but if you're listening to me, we probably share similar interests so if I find something that is interesting, I'm going to tell you about it. And sometimes yes. those things that I come across, I'll, I'll post on our, you know, small business support group. Other times it's something that I want to like uh, banter back and forth with you about Shannon. So we put it in the show, but you know, think of yourself as a curator and, and suddenly the amount of content that you have available to you opens up hugely, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. You yeah. can even highlight that as a section in your newsletter, you know, and, yeah. and be like, oh, there's things that, and, and, uh, there's a uh, company called Huckberry, I think. Okay. And they do that great. They, you know, they sell outdoor gear and clothes, basically shoes. Uh, they don't, well, they make some of their own, sure. but they always have a section like, oh, our favorite hikes and, you know, best lake this, or, you know, this, and, and it, and I open up, I don't buy anything from them, but I open up because I look at that and go, oh, that's pretty cool. I like this. Yeah, I like that. Interesting. Um, yeah. 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 And then lastly, uh, you know, on the content front, the great thing about it is, is once you create it or curate it, you can share it across every, everywhere and repurpose it on your social channels. I mean, this is not stuff like, oh, now I have to create newsletter content, social content, stuff for Twitter, Facebook, whatever, but you, you can share that stuff over and over because your, your audience is different on each uh, yes. channel. You know? Yes. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, it can be really great and you can create a really good system that uses that content and dribbles it out. We do it now with, you know, uh, many episodes that yeah. we have uh, cut up into small little chunks and they're very popular because like, oh, in five minutes I can learn all about the importance of of putting a funny line on a name tag or something like last right. week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, that was super popular. That's right. Yeah. Yep. People, people like that. So, yeah. um, so to kind of, you know, wrap it up, build a list. You own that data, really important, grow it organically. That's how you're going to get true fans of your business track and automate it, uh, and create interesting content that adds value to people and you'll be successful. Uh, I know it works. Yeah, we and and we do it here, whether you know it or not. If you go to businessshow.co, you will find the ability to sign up for our newsletter. And we do all of these things here. We hope we get it right, at least most of the time. But you can let us yes. know. Feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Thank you for good. for being the uh, the resident expert on this stuff. Oh no, so. not not expert. Just I've done it for a long time. I'm uh, definitely still learning. I just that the help concept you mentioned is really good. That might yeah. Be the, the, yeah. I yeah. always say I learn the most here. Yeah. Um, so share with us how your newsletter system works. Feedback at businessshow.co or uh, come over to Facebook in this small business support group. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. As we said, connect with us on LinkedIn. We put our links in the show notes at businessshow.co. Sign up for our newsletter while you are there. Make sure you visit our sponsors, too. We uh, we don't get paid when you visit them, but we do. Uh, it, it you know Our job is to introduce you to them. So go visit them, and, and whether you buy anything from them or not is between you and them. But we'd, uh, we'd love to make sure we have made that introduction. So check them out. TaylorBrands.com slash SBS, HunterDouglas.com slash SBS, and keep living that charm life, huh? We'll see you next week. Yeah.